<laughs> That's where I start the video. <laughs> Who did it? <laughs> well, that's I want to just introduction. Now, sometimes when we have the talks, there's maybe uh, 150, 200 years of seeking, you know, at the group, at the meeting, and. Uh, that has to show you something right there. There's something that's fundamentally off when you're looking for what you are. Yeah. Now, if you're looking for a new car, you know, a pair of pants, a date, then you, you can, using what's looking to look for a date, that works, yeah? But when you try to use what's looking to look for what's looking, it doesn't work. See, this is the dilemma of spirituality in a sense. We're applying the same format to getting something to, to what we are, yeah? And in the, in the annals of writings about spirituality or whatever you want to call it, there's been a lot of warnings. And the warning is, you know, the seeker is the sought, yeah? So if you hear that, it should stop something, for a, at least for a second. So the seeker is the sought. For, that, for there to be a seeker, it's based on the premise it's obviously not the sword. Yes, or why would there be seeking? Yeah. So if the seeking, so there's got to be the seeking, which is used to imply the seeker, it's got to be on an assumption that isn't true, in a sense. Yeah? If the statement, the seeker is the sword, is true, that the basis of the seeking is in ba it's, it's, it's based on a false assumption, yeah? So the seeker that seems to be the seeking is using the seeking to find something that's either going to improve it, enlarge it, authenticate it, complete it, fulfill it, unite it, merge with it, yes? So now you can merge with a pair of pants, you, know, you can merge with a latte, you can merge with a lot of things. But uh, if you are that, hmm, which you're seeking, there's going to be a fundamental, uh, it's not going to go anywhere, yeah? Because there's something, there's something that's so fundamental that's not being seen, that it's, it's, see, it's not being seen so much you're actually looking for it as it, what, how is that going to go? Yeah, and if you keep doing more of it, it's, it's not going to correct. Yeah. In other words, if the, if the first step is off, you may not even notice it. But if you take 800,000 steps from that point, you'll see a curve that will go way, 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 way off. Yeah. It didn't seem like, no, that's exactly how it should go. But then you see, so... Let's say you're in spiritual practice and you're just at this, but there's certain little suspicions are arising now, yeah, because there's people that have been doing it a lot longer than you, and you see them way like this, and they're trying to tell you, hey, I've been meditating for 40 years, nothing's really happened. You know, hearing that from here would be, let's take the next exit because I've already been warned about people way over on this, uh, this, you know, 40 more years of that bend, has, and they, they're, they're announcing to me, hey, fundamentally nothing's really changed. Oh, all right, just pull the emergency brake on the bus and get out. You know, don't wait for the next stop, <laughs> just get out and then see what happens. So to me, the message, this message, is really a warning to, for people who may be, they may have all the information necessary to become very clear about this, but they haven't had the right little trigger. Yeah, because they're still, in a way, when the system fails you, the first thing that happens, you believe it's you're the one that made it fail. That's the self-centeredness, yeah? So the system protects itself by blaming 
Yeah. So it never questions the fundamental flaw. It questions you're not doing enough, or you're not with the right person, or you haven't gone to enough continents. You should have stayed an hour longer at that ashram. And there's always, so there's always an excuse or rationale, but fundamentally, you can't use what you are to look for what you are. It just doesn't work. You can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. It's not going to work. And so when these messages have been shared at a group, it wouldn't be appropriate for that message that you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. It wouldn't be appropriate if it was directed at Jeff or Mike or Paul. Yeah. But if it's truly overriding the sense of Jeff, Mike, and Paul and seeing Jeff, Mike, and Paul as the Buddha, the message is to the Buddha. And it's trying to talk to the Buddha, not to you, but to what you are, about what you're not. So it's trying to tell the Buddha, hey Buddha, you can't use yourself to find yourself. Now, this isn't like a forced camp of understanding. Oh, you must leave. You know, it's just like a spiritual shoe. You come in here, you walk in here, yeah? And these spiritual shoes are put out, and you put your foot in there, and if they fit, you wear it. If they don't fit, then go buy some spiritual hiking boots or whatever, with a lot of tread, because you're gonna be on that path a long freaking time. <laughs> a long time. So these are just simple shoes we put out that fundamentally, if you are that, which you're looking for, the looking for, it would be the greatest way to disguise it. Yes, don't you see it? It's just so, it's like basic 101, you know? If you, <laughs> if you are that which you're looking for, it can't be used to look for itself, yes? It can be used to, it's been being used to look for everything else. We're gonna have some rain too, that's cool. It's being used to look for everything else, and that's fine. Yep. But you can't use the awareness to be aware of the awareness. Yes? So, this whole direction of the talks, this message, is to really question the fundamental s setup, which is, this is the hypothesis. There, there's a looking for what we are from what we're not, yeah? So what you are becomes a goal or a destination or a fulfilling moment or a possibility. So if I work hard enough as what I'm not, I can arrive at what I am, yeah? This is a total questioning of that whole system. It's just saying maybe if you can, at the same moment, there's a seeing of what you're not, looking for what you are from what you are, inherently, because that's all that's really happening. It can seem like you're something else, but you're not something else, yeah? See, that's the absoluteness of the solution. It's inherently there. It has, doesn't have to be made or arrived at, it's always available at all times. The correction, isn't even necessary from the solution's point of view. The correction has only value when you're in the problem's point of view. When you're in the act of looking for what you're not, yeah, actually looking for what you are from what you're not, you hear the message that you're not that which is looking for what you are, you are that which is being looked for, yes? Then the rotation occurs and suddenly the freaking shoe fits, suddenly, the horse is before the cart. You'll sense it. It's just a perfect, seamless little correction. And when the correction is felt, it tells you there was no need for a correction. We may want to move in. Eh? Yeah. All right, let's, we'll, part two. Part two will be happening soon. But he actually just mentioned something else. So let's talk about a few of the pitfalls of what happens. The message hopefully is not being directed to you, yeah? It's hopefully being thrown at everywhere, which means you don't have to aim. You just throw it. What you need to do is be able to throw it over the mental arms that you're being represented by, yes? Almost like, you know, in Star Wars, they have that giant Death Star that shoots everything down. That's sort of like the mental defenses against this message because 
it will say it's the one that's hearing the message. As soon as this idea of Paul claims to be the hearer of the message, there's a, a distorting of the message, yes? Like in physics, they talk about the observation distorts the observed, yeah? So when you, as what you're not, claims to be the hearing of the message of what you are, it gets distorted. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. So the whole point is, and then when what you're not's not feeling that good, or it's having a little trouble, it will try to use this message of, of, of what it's not to deny Paul, yeah? And try to get out of the feeling that Paul's having as Paul. So self will try to get out of self. That's not the use of the message. That's mental denial. This message is negation, it's different, yeah? Negation is different than denying. So what happens is a lot of people as people hear the message they're not a person and in certain situations it looks like an advantageous position as a person not to be a person right now <laughs> like when they've done something bad or something happened or this or that or they've disappointed someone so they'll go well there is no someone or whatever <laughs> that's not it that's an example of what you're not hearing the message of what it is yes it doesn't go anywhere. It won't work, really. You're not going to get out of the pickle you're in with, with non-duality because it will be a denial, not a negation. A negation is seeing what you're not from what you are. It's not the, what you're not hearing of the message and then trying to apply it to get an advantage as what you're not. It doesn't work. It doesn't freaking work. Yeah? Yes. Same thing like in recovery. <laughs> recovery of from disease, addiction, whatever addiction it is. If the addiction gets loud enough in your one's life that it's showing effects all over, what a lot of people do at first is they try to deny that they have a problem. Yeah, I'm not an addict, I just like getting high, whatever it is. <laughs> so they try to deny it, and because the system that's trying to apply its solution is failed, that fails. <laughs> yeah? So if you don't want to be an addict, you're acting like one more than ever, yeah? When you're denying you're an alcoholic, you're fucking experiencing an alcohol, alcoholism unbelievably, yeah? So it doesn't work. So what happens in a basic rudimentary way in recovery programs is they bring you to the point of owning what the mental state doesn't want to own. You know, you really fucking hurt that person, do this or that. And then you go through these, these steps to get to finally own what you've been trying to deny. Yeah, and then usually, all right, now you become a better Paul and stuff like that, and you live by principles, but you can take it another step farther. So here is, first you're denying what you're not, which makes it more of you than ever, because it doesn't work. Then there's an acceptance of what you're not, allowing it to finally freaking land, but then there's a third move, which is then you see you're not that, yeah? You don't try to see you're not that as a way of getting out of what you're not for what you're not. You see you're not that because you allowed it to be as real as it wanted to be, and you see it's unfucking real. Yes? It's sort of like if you were afraid to be a fraud, you'll feel like one thousands of times. So finally you allow that you're a freaking fraud, you know? You allow it to land. Oh no, that's that's the death day. No, no, no. <laughs> finally, you fucking give up, you realize you're living, up, living under a failed system, you allow that which you've been trying to avoid for years to finally land, oh, it's going to be terrible, ah, oh, it's not that bad. <laughs> and, then, and then suddenly, it shows you it's not real. And you suddenly realize something, hopefully, sooner or later down the road, you realize you're the reality, see? When something that isn't true is seen to be true by you, yeah? By, and it seems so true, you're trying to deny it, it's as real as real can be. Because just like we say in recovery, false evidence appears real, an acronym for fear. So what, where would that be happening? Not in your elbow, right? It's the head, yes? Or whatever you want to call it. What's being conscious of what the ideas that are presenting a future and a past and a history and this and that, all that stuff, yeah? A lot of it is false evidence, obviously. You know, when it tells you, it gives you what's going to be, it's going to be like at 4 p.m. and 8, at 8 a.m., it's false fucking evidence. It's just fucking, 
just riffing on what oh, it's going to suck, might as well just stay home all day, yeah? Yeah, I, I'm not going to go to work, they're going to fire me. No one's even thought about you at work, but you're thinking they're all <laughs> planning on firing you. All this is false evidence, yes? So, but if it's, if it's seen as false evidence, it doesn't have an effect. But if it appears to be true to what's true, which is us, that false evidence suddenly appears to be real. Now you're paralyzed at 8 a.m. With the, with the idea of what it's going to be like at 4 p.m. Yes? If you look at all of the effects, look at the dynamic of that, how powerful you are. That you and I are giving everything all the meaning it has. How powerful. What does that imply that you and I are giving everything all the meaning it has? Everything and all is a pretty comprehensive word. Both of them in one sentence is unbelievably, there's no little, there's no little exemption in that. Everything and all the meaning. So your idea of God is your idea of God. It's not God's idea of God, except that you're God having an idea of God, really. <laughs> so you can say it that way, ultimately. So, so you and I are giving everything all the meaning it has. What does that imply? What does it imply that on a good day, time seems to fly by, and on a bad day, it seems to drag? Do you think time has, like, years? First, reverse, idle, you know? No, it's you. There's a dreaming, yeah? There's a subjective experience, which is the rudimentary baseline of dreaming, yeah? In the dreaming, that's the baseline. You can see the dreaming, actually even in the dreaming, by the subjectiveness of it. There's an event and everyone has a different experience of the event, so you seem to override the event, yes? You seem to override the thing. So you get a couple of hints and then you read something. You give everything all the meaning it has. So you see maybe a hundred times where you gave meaning and then it doesn't just stay there and you gotta go 101, 102, 103, 104. No, there's a leap and you realize, oh, that means everything has been given the meaning. Yes, you see? You hear the message, the message is about, let's say, one little strip. But that strip explains, shows a, a, a fundamental pattern of this whole place. The mind can leap into that. That's called entertaining. You don't need 800 zillion examples that you're giving everything all the meaning it has. Maybe one, maybe 10 is enough to have your foot in the shoe and it fits. So what, what's up here? I'm bitching like I'm the victim of everything and do 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 and I'm powerless and this person is doing this to me and this. You see, you're in you're in cahoots with the whole thing. <laughs> and then you'll read a statement in a book called Course in Miracles. It doesn't say you and I are in a dream. It says you and I are dreaming. We are the dreaming. Yeah. The most you can say as the body is is you're in a dream and you're in a dream of something else. Something else is dreaming me. Yeah. I'm in a dream of God or something like that. But to make the leap that you and I are the dreaming is unbelievable. Yes? It changes. You and I are the dreaming of this dreaming. We forget that we're dreaming. How the hell is that happening? Well, that which is dreaming is in the act of being identified as the dreamt. That which is dreaming bodies takes itself to be a body. Each second it's being presented that way. The mental state you says or assumes or definitely is so sure that you were a body in past. Yeah? And it's so sure that you're gonna be a body because it's worried about it all freaking day. And it goes, I was a body, I will be a body, obviously, therefore I am a body. That's how it does it. It can't say, therefore, I am a body, because there isn't one. It's an appearance. It's dreaming. So that which is dreaming of things can't be a freaking thing. That which is perceiving can't be perceived. That which perceiving is not a thing. It perceives things. That which is perceiving ten, cannot be perceived. So everything, so... 
So just reverse it, all right? So look at the game board. Then everything that's perceived cannot be perceiving. Bing, 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 bing. We're all off the board. Yet everything keeps being perceived because it's not you perceiving. There's a perceiving of what you call you, but there is not you perceiving. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. So there's a, there's a, it's just so beautiful. There's a negation of all that is being used to reinforce the idea of being what you're not. And the message is to what you are, not to what you're not. If the message of what, if the what you're not claims to be the hero of the message, it just gets totally fucked, really. It's like gets on a phone and it can't just feel the sadness of losing a girlfriend because there was no girlfriend and there's no Paul to feel sad. And it'll go on for 30 minutes as it goes through this mental contortion of a, a mental understanding of non-duality. And then finally they just start crying. We could have just started there, but no, it takes 30 minutes and the whole philosophy gets exhausted. Oh, I'm so sorry to laugh. Fucking, there you go. Start there because it's not you. Yes? So whatever can be perceived cannot be perceiving. You and I are the dreaming of the dreaming. We forget that we're dreaming. How the hell does that continue? Only in time could it appear to be so, and it's appearing to be so to what so, which is dreaming. What so is dreaming, yeah? What so is dreaming of what it's not? So how does what so continue to forget what it is? It becomes identified seemingly to what it's not, which is the body. To the point here, it will even get to the absurd point where it will start looking for itself from what it's not, which is the fundamental flaw of advanced spiritual addiction. We arrive at a point where we are practicing to look for ourselves from the telescope of what we're not. And see, the more and more you try to focus on the goal, what gets amplified is you. <laughs> the knower of God gets much more attention than the God that you want to know. It's the knower of God. So all your, I'm on, I'm on point of concentrate. No, there's a huge picture of your fucking happy face being reinforced all day, yeah? Every time you spend all this, oh, I'm busy looking for what I am, you know? Where's the emphasis on what you're not? So this whole thing, the warning of this, this school is to question what you're not from what you are. Not question what you're not from what you're not, because it'll go into nihilism. Then you're gonna think, if I'm not poor, I'm just gonna lay on a couch all day. You know, oh, I'll, I'll just take acid when I leave here. No, you're probably not because you know what? What you're not is fucking programmed. <laughs> There's certain guardrails you're not going over. All this idea of choice is fucking bogus, to tell you the truth. You're predetermined because you're a projection in time. What? Yes. <laughs> So what does it say? Oh, what happens? All right, you for, what you are, what we are, forgets what it is by dreaming it's what it's not. What happens? Suddenly, suddenly, in this basis, everything it's dreaming, thoughts, feelings, everything, now has the ability to affect it as the drought. Yeah? Everything is dreaming. So thoughts are dreaming, feelings are dreaming, Conscious contact is actually dreaming. All of it's dreaming, yes? Everything that gets in contact now has the ability to affect you. That's a diagnosis of your day-to-day -day as what you're not. So a thought owned owns you. Once you feel you're the thinker, you're bound to the thoughts that are being noticed. That's what happens. Feelings come and go, but the feeler keeps being fucking assumed. It uses every feeling to imply that which lasts, that which was there before the feeling, that had the feeling, and now has the absence of the feeling. That's the bigger feeling being generated. So what? You see what you're not, from where, from what you are. How is that possible? It always is. 
when is it possible now where here you are the seeing you are that which nothing precedes there's nothing that's seen the scene you're the end of the line you're the last house on the block if you looked at every house and every house was oh I gave a little meaning to some shit or I gave a lot of meaning to a lot of shit and then you hit the last house which you gave meaning everything all the meaning has that's the end of the block <laughs> yeah you're at the event horizon <laughs> you have taken the, the role of the dreamt as far as it can go and then there's nothing the dreamt can do This doesn't, you don't need to understand it. It could be helpful here, yeah? But there's no need. And if you believe understanding it is knowing it, and you believe knowing it is the highest level, then you're missing it because it's being. And being is inherently there already. The understanding and the knowing comes after, it doesn't produce the being, it comes after the being. Yeah, the being is what illuminates all understanding. And understanding doesn't illuminate being. Illumin being illuminates all understanding. So here it's nice to have a, an understanding or a set of principles that allow you to navigate this freaking dreaming as the dreamt, yes? But non-duality, be clear, non-duality is nothing. That's its great quality. It's nothing added or subtracted. It is just what is. It's the inherent awareness that doesn't get ad added on to or tweaked or diminished or it's just there. It's just here. Unbidden, unclaimed. So hey, maybe you'll see a new understanding here. You'll see that everything is verbing that there is no noun to be found. There's no thing. There's no thing. There's just an appearance of things, yeah? The appearance of things happens in no thing. No thing isn't a possibility in the world of things. The world of things appears in no thing. You get the heart horse in front of the car. You stop giving this the most relevance in the pursuit of that which is all irrelevant, and you see that which is irrelevant from what's relevant, yes? And then you'll be able to travel lighter as what you're not here. And in fact, what more do you want than that? All your little pipe dreams, if you were content and satisfied, yeah? And if you were in the attitude, instead of, of, of always wanting to arrive, but on having never left, that that which you are, you have never left, you would be fucking pretty chill. And maybe, <laughs> maybe you find a lot of value in that over time. You really you would. And you get weaned off of experiences, you get weaned off of a lot of fucking things. You know? And then I don't think the transference from here to here will be that, that rocky <laughs> because you've pretty much transferred already. You don't see any ending or beginning. You don't see an entrance or exit. You don't see getting in front of the line or behind the line. Yeah. yeah. So. so the message thrown over our heads with the hopes that what is, here's it. And I don't have hope about that. I have complete faith about that. Complete faith. Complete faith. That which is doesn't take much to get that which is. It has to go through this little trick, which is seeing what it's not. Because, in, because the main delusionary platform is the act of being identified as something else. So when that seemed to be so, there's no, you don't, you don't end up having to go to seeing classes, you know, you know prove my seeing, you know, prove my consciousness. No, you just sort of, maybe you'll be drawn to, I don't know, but to me it's been different. And you're just basically rooted in what is. Yeah, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It's like, uh, 
It's like a pool you never get out of. These are all the strokes. One day, two, two, when's the next lap? You, know? you never left the pool. Nothing's ever happened. Though. <laughs> Maybe you'd be able to not take yourself so seriously, really. And that's the key, because you know, your own interest being captured through the identification as what you're not becomes the biggest, biggest obscuring agent. It's your own interest. It's so weird. Yeah? Your own interest is what clouds everything up. Yeah. It's amazing. When that hits you, it's amazing. When you see that me wanting to lose interest is a huge amount of interest. Yeah? Or that old thing in recovery I love, which it says you got to quit playing God because it doesn't work. But then if you see this message in that view of recovery, you see that which is playing God is claiming to be the one who heard the message, you got to quit playing God. Now, if that which is playing God tries to quit playing God, what is that but playing God? Yes? That's the fundamental flaw. F-L-A-W, not F-L-O-O-R. The fundamental flaw <laughs> is that, yeah. That which you're not is hearing or claiming to be the hearer of the message of about that which you are. So suddenly you try to arrive at that which you are on the imaginary horse of that which you're not. <laughs> That's the message. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, you know, you can expound on it more. If you were paying me better, I'd have a three hour <laughs> better. But it's just a simple invitation. And the invitation can be repeated a lot. I mean, you've been repeating it for 20 years, <laughs> seemingly. It can be repeated a lot. And you try to, you know, it's like pasta, and then you have 8,000 different sources. <laughs> It's the same pasta, but you make it look, you throw some more stuff in there. Yeah. But basically, it's the same message. There's a fundamental illusory activity going on, which is we're living life from what we're not. And in that condition, then what you are can only be a topic that which you're not maybe interested in or not. Yeah. And it's actually probably better if it isn't interested in it, because if it is interested in it, that's what turns into spiritual addiction, because you're addicted to the experiences and the subtle feelings and everything, but it's as what you're not. And so as what, and it explained very beautifully by Ramana Maharshi, he said, uh, there's a presupposing, pre is a great word, because it means before, I think, so it definitely implies time is the main ingredient of the dreaming, yes? So there's a presupposing of a non-existent thing. Yeah. This does not exist in and of itself, does it? Have you seen someone you knew dead and then you don't really go, hey, that wasn't really Fred to begin with, you know? Because you see a body, but it's not animated, and you realize the animation was not of the body. It just wasn't, you know? The body was a capsule or something, but it wasn't, uh, yeah? All right, so the presupposing a non-existent thing, which takes a lot of effort to keep doing. That's why the mental state is on. That's why like 70,000 thoughts supposedly happen a day. They're not about interesting topics, are they? They're about really a presupposing of a non-existent thing, trying to be remembered by yesterday and tomorrow, really. Yeah, because it can only be remembered what you're not. What you're not doesn't have a light that projects on anything. It's reflective light, it's remembered, yep. All right, so there's a presupposing of a non-existent thing that wants to get salvation for the non-existent thing. Oh, that makes sense, yeah. But see, the thing is, the premise is based on a non-existent thing. <laughs> so, that wants to get salvation for itself. You know, really, if you were at a spiritual college, you could leave after the first hour of class if you ran right there. <laughs> Just stop at that point. Wait a minute. There's a non-existent thing that wants to get salvation for itself. 
Well, isn't there an inherent salvation from it? Does it doesn't exist? Yeah, well, you know, but wait. So, so he goes, all right, if this is the case, you know, if this is taken to be us, and then we're looking to further us, whatever, then your spiritual practices themselves, see, a lot of people will say a lot of shit else you're doing, yeah, that's true, that's not going to work, but spiritual practice have a certain given nobility they don't rightfully deserve, really. No, it's different, spiritual practices. So spiritual practices themselves are reinforcing the non-existent thing. Jeff, fucking whatever. You're reinforcing the non-existent thing. Yeah. <laughs> how can they destroy the non-existent thing? Yeah. First of all, how could you destroy a non-existent thing to begin with? It doesn't exist. So basically... <laughs> Let's say you've been trying to get out of something for a long time. Then there's a sudden realization you're not in it. Yeah? <laughs> That's sort of what it's like. So when, there's, when the presupposing that some place you're in is real, then all your desires and attempts there to escape it are going to fail because they're going to be used to reinforce the reality of that which you thought you were in, which isn't true, yeah, by your urge to get out. So it's your urge to get out that's reinforcing the idea that you're in. So the, the way you get out is realizing you're not in. Yeah. The way you get out of an imaginary problem is seeing it's imaginary. If you try to apply a solution, you've just given it a reality because you don't understand you and I are giving everything all the meaning it has. You don't think, oh, well, I'm not doing that today. I'm not feeling that good about myself. No, it has nothing to do with your personal fucking idea of you. Your activity here is giving everything all the meaning it has, like it or not. So you've now been giving an imaginary place the meaning it has to you, which is it's a fucking real place. It's captured me, and I've been trying to escape. And I'm reading people who escaped seemingly 5,000 years ago. So I've been reading the books, and there's always a page missing. You know? so I'm trying to get out of that terrible place. Oh, it may, and a lot of people in, who are in the same prison are like, yeah, go, 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 go. But the fact is, you're not in. See? So, the thing is, see, with wanting to get out of an imaginary place, if you're obsessed with the one who thought it was in, getting out is like a fucking high, yeah? I'm, I'm, just, I'm special, I'm the only one who ever escaped from this. I mean, you have so, the mental state has so much vested interest in being in, because its whole premise of how great I am by my escape being was based on being a real place. It's not that interested in the solution, which is it's not, it's an imaginary place. Yeah? Because it can't feel, it can't harvest much out of that. Oh, well, what? There's no medals for not getting out of an imaginary place. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, fuck it. Let me start practicing. You know, so, but yeah, but that's the, that's the message, like it or not. Yeah? Well, how do you deal with an imaginary problem? You don't. <laughs> really. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but it's so real that if it's so real, you better fucking deal with it, you see? It's not, it's not fundamentalism. It's not rigid. If you believe you need to really do something, you better fucking do it because you're giving everything all the meaning it has. You better realize what's happening. If you think the only way you're going to be okay is by meditating, you better fucking meditate. Because you're setting up all the rules. You are. You're giving everything all the meaning it has. Now, if you don't feel like you need to meditate, and then you're driven to meditate, that's, that does a disservice in a sense, yeah? But someone who really believes they need to do something, they better fucking do it, because you're, you are giving everything all the meaning it has, and you've set up a requirement. And you're not gonna, you're gonna keep falling in the obstacle hole until you jump over it. And this is dreaming yourself out of the dreaming. It can go that way too. Like the Course says, hey, again, you and I are the dreaming of the dream, but what this case is, we're gonna be, we're just gonna dream ourselves out of the dream. 
How's that going to do? Maybe practicing something, fucking staying sober, doing this, and therefore you feel enough, oh, you've given yourself permission yeah. as the action figure to be a little bit at, more at ease and at peace. You can't confuse the two. You can't... If you're established as the action figure, you can't use that you're not an action figure to make it easier for the action figure. It doesn't work, ultimately. Just keep entertaining the possibility. Do what you need to do here, yeah, to, so that you're fucking somewhat okay, and then let mind just entertain the possibilities that are available. And mind doesn't go from A, B, C, D. Mind goes from A to Z. It makes leaps, yes? Something you didn't have, it, you had, thought you had an idea of suddenly gets completely erased and you are it. Yeah, it's just a whole nother ballgame. Do not limit the possibility of what you are by what you're not. I heard this, and from that moment, hmm, I've been hearing it, but when I heard it, from that moment, it was like a, an unspoken yes, but it had a vibration. It just kept vibrating like a hum. Never ever changed. And in time, as this, it was coronated as the last answer many years ago. Which, in a place of time, of solutions and answers and problems and this and that and questions, for something to arrive at being the last answer, which negates all need for any other answer concerning that topic, it's a fun, it's a fucking unbelievable, really. Yeah, to put the rest of all that seeking for a new turbocharged answer or an extreme radical answer, just basic dog shit awareness being completely more than enough. Yeah? Because what? It has a reliability nothing has. It's always available at all times, right where you are, with no requirement necessary to meet it. You can rest there, really, literally, rest, deep, really rest there. Because it's reliable. It's not coming and going. It's not based on your condition or your circumstances or your actions or your this or your that. It's inherently available at all times because it's not of time. Right where you are because it's not locatable and it has no requirements necessary other than the ones you make up. Yeah, and sometimes what a life is is dropping the requirements. Sometimes a 70 year journey here is you just dropping old ideas and old things about what, what, how you thought it had to be for something to be okay and all that. Yeah, maybe. Hopefully you don't have that many, but they'll drop. You'll dream yourself out of the dreaming and the dream will look happier as you do. What more do you freaking want? Yeah. You're not losing anyway, ever. That which is dreaming can only return to that which is dreaming. It can't get lost in the dreamt. It can't. The dreamt is of time. It ends, yeah? But the dreaming doesn't. So all the water that you think is locked in Marin City is going to find itself back in the ocean. It's inevitable, yeah? That's the same with this. Sometimes quickly, sometimes slowly. It doesn't really matter because when you seem to arrive there in time, it tells you it's always been that way. Or when you're sitting there here in time, it tells you it's always been that way. Yeah, in other words, it doesn't become and it doesn't unbecome. It just is, yeah? Overriding all circumstances and situations, all avenues and portals of going and leaving, all that, and includes it. It's the context of all that, yes? And all that that's moving and trying to arrive or saying it's departed and this and that, it hasn't got left at all. It's impossible. Yeah. The bubble bubbles and pops and it's the ocean, yes? There's no big, huge 20, 20 steps to transform back to the ocean. No, it's just <laughs> ocean. And when the ocean, it's always been the ocean. 
And hopefully it can have that sense while it seems to be appearing as a bubble, that it's always been the ocean. It'll allow the bubble to travel light. Yeah, yeah. All right. Any questions? I have some questions. <laughs> Not about this topic, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. Eh? Any uh, anyone's hit needs or interested in a book? I think I have some books, and 